Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video on how you can use your iNav data files along with any video you captured to create video like this. This is using a free application called Dashware that uh, was is now part of the GoPro family. Doesn't seem to be too actively developed at the moment, but it's a free thing you can download and with a little bit of effort you can get the gauges on here and you can have beautiful overlay. This is particularly handy if you have something like action camera footage or you're using something like the DJI HD system where it isn't capturing all of the OSD data. So you want to be able to show your friends, you know, the height, speed, location, distance, uh, and all that goodness. Now, now I need to say a massive thank you to a gentleman called Les Jack. Now Leslie uh, goes by Flynn203 in the forums, you may have seen him. I was looking at doing something with Dashware after I got into all the DJI stuff, uh, kind of w uh, autumn, winter last year, and Leslie got in touch, he's a patron of mine, and basically says, I figured all this out, uh, which was brilliant, it's made it so much easier. A massive thank you to Leslie for getting all this stuff done. Now it is a free application, but you will need to be able to set up Blackbox in iNav. Not particularly tricky, I'll show you that. But I'll put a link down below to the wiki iNav uh, for Blackbox as well. And you also need to be able to cut and paste and drag files around, as well as do a bit of command line stuff in Windows. So if you are not complementous with how to do stuff in your operating system, dragging files into program file areas you're not going to like this but if you can do basic things on your pc then you should be fine i'm going to go through each step uh, relatively slowly so hopefully you'll get to the end and it'll all work now the process itself is pretty straightforward we're going to download dashware along with a couple of auxiliary files we're going to install dashware and then copy those auxiliary files into the dashware directory that's on the computer and that will tell dashware that we're going to be using inav stuff as well and that gives the option to import the inav log files we're going to have to set up black box recording on the inav model as i've said i'll show you how to do that then we're going to have to download a little converter and convert the log file that we get from the flight controller into something that's ready for Dashware to use. Once we've done that, then we can import the video file that we've got from either the DJI system or an action camera or whatever, along with the log file, and we can sync them so that the telemetry data and the video are lined up. And we can drag the gauges into place, decide what we want, and away we go. Now, this is a really cool piece of software because you can even do custom gauges and you can also use Dashware for other technology. It doesn't have to be for iNav. It'll obviously work with all the GoPro stuff. Surprise, surprise, it's part of the GoPro family. But it'll also work with things like OpenTX telemetry and things like Ardu Pilot. Uh, so there may be supplementary videos if this one's popular enough on those extra things and also how to create things like custom gauges too. So with that said, if we understand what the process is, let me go through the detail behind it. Step one is we need to download and install Dashware. Now we can get Dashware from dashware.net, links all below. You need to download that and install it. I had a weird thing on my PCs here where it was telling me that Dashware was already running. I just um, tried it after five minutes and it worked. Not sure what was going on there, but it installed okay. Now that's going to install it somewhere onto your computer, usually in kind of, you know, the C uh, program files, Dashware, somewhere like that. Make a note of where it's putting it when you do the installation. So the next thing we need to do is then download something from bit.ly to mmgzv1. Now, don't worry again, links down below. This particular file includes some stuff that we need to copy into the directory uh, the, of Dashware to make it so that Dashware is ready and understands how to read all the iNav stuff. So two things we need to copy across. We need to find iNav.xml from that file that we just downloaded and copy it into the data profiles directory of Dashware. And then once we've done that, the second thing we need to do is copy the custom data types.xml into the settings folder of the Dashware directory on your PC. Make a note of the directory structures here of where these things are so that you're putting them in the right place. Once we've done that, we need to set up logging on iNav. So if you have a flight controller with SD card, make sure you've got an SD card in there. You don't need a big one. It won't support huge volumes, uh, but plug the SD card in, connect to it in iNav, go into the black box tab in iNav configurator and set the frequency to 132. 
Now, 132 is going to be fine for fixed wing. You might want it slightly higher if you're going to be uh, a little quad or something that's going to be very, very quick. And that hopefully then will record your log file when the system is armed. And then that is going to be the thing that you download and use with the next bit of software. So at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the field and you're going to fly and you're going to capture your video footage and your flight controller is going to be logging what's happening onto the SD card. So after we get back from the flight, we need to either eject the SD card or connect the flight controller to INF Configurator and download the log file. In addition to that, we also need to download this black box decoder software from the address on the screen. Again, I'll put a link down below. Once that is downloaded, it's just a zip file. If you unpack that zip file, you'll find all of these files on the screen. And this is the stuff that we need to turn the text file that we've just got off the SD card from the flight controller into something that Dashware will use. It's going to be called Black Box Decode. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the log file that's come off the flight controller into the same directory just makes it easier if it's in the same directory and then what we're going to have to do is start a command line and then find uh, the directory that that is in. Now this is on my desktop so I'll cd desktop and then uh, if I do a directory it's called black box decoder of course it is Let's change directory to black box decoder and if we do a directory again there's all the pieces. Now there's the log file that we just copied across log 00005.txt so to make that work, we need to type in black box underscore black box underscore decode hyphen hyphen. In fact, let me just um, scroll down a little bit so you can see this. It's kind of at the bottom, isn't it? There we go. So it's black box underscore decode hyphen hyphen merge hyphen GPS and then the name of the log file. So it's going to be log 0005.txt. Hit enter. And then it will cleverly create a CSV file and a couple of other things as well. Now you could actually import some of those into things like something like Google Earth and see the GPS coordinates directly. But we're just going to exit out of that. And there we have at the top a CSV file. So open the CSV file. In fact, we'll have a quick look at it. I'll show you what it looks like in whatever application you have, uh, whatever free office software or Microsoft Office. And then you'll see it looks a little bit like this. Just lots and lots and lots and lots of data and information. And across the top, you can kind of get an idea what some of it is. This is the log file in the format that Dashware can import. Now, there's probably only one thing you need to be a little bit careful of. Let me just open up all the pieces. The first line can often contain lots of zeros. See here we've got things like VBAT, RSSI numbers, altitude, the servo positions. If I just scroll across here and find the GPS bits, you will probably find that the first line with the GPS data is zero. So the GPS coordinates and stuff, um, that might confuse things. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and delete that entire line from the file and then I'm going to save it back and then we're ready to import it into Dashware. So now we've got the video and the log file, now comes the exciting bit. We can actually put them together in the application and away we go. So let's create a new project. Uh, we'll give it a name and then you can just leave the project template as it is and click OK. And then we need to add in both the video and the data file. The video is going to be the video from the camera. The data file is going to be the one that we just created. This is the CSV file and the one that we deleted the first line from. So I'm going to hit that and in the drop down list we're looking for INAV21 which is the one where we put in the directory. We're going to click add as well. Now you know it's worked because in the defaults you'll see all these additional things appear. So that, believe it or not, is a GPS trace of the flight. We have speed indicator and other bits and pieces. We have, um, I think, that is speed. Uh, we can get rid of stuff as well. Let's get rid of the GoPro logo. And if we select things, we can actually drag them around as well. Now the tricky part is the synchronization. Now the trick I would say with this is that we synchronize either to the launch or to the landing. Now this video and trace 
Again, I need to say a massive thank you to Les. This is a video from uh, one of his flights. Uh, I haven't managed to get out and get this data myself. So, Les, thank you so much for all your help with this, your patience teaching me all about it. Now, this is actually the last half of the flight. You'll see here that the video itself is only four minutes and ten seconds long, whereas the the actual flight itself, if I scrub through this, if, um, hopefully you can see here, there's a, like a little red dot. If I actually zoom in, that's the location of the plane. And as I scrub through the telemetry data, you can not only see the position of the plane on the track that it flew, but on here you can see all these dials reacting. So we've got the uh, direction, we've also got the miles per hour and all that goodness. So we need to synchronize to this. Now what I would do is I would, because this is the second half, scrub to the end to find the bit where we've landed. You see here at the moment it's saying 56 miles an hour. We don't want that. We want to keep on going. It's going to be right towards the end of it. About there where he stops. And we're going to basically say that this corresponds with the video. So we're going to sync with video and see how well we did. We'll play the last little bit of the video back. So this is Les coming in for an approach. Speed doesn't look too bad. But when he stopped, see here it's still say it's still slowing down. So that's not quite right. So what we're gonna do is we'll unsync from the video. So this is the data file, the telemetry we're playing with here. We probably need to push that right to the very end. And then we'll sync the video again. Let's try this. Because we want it so that as he's landing, that's almost right. And this is a little bit iterative. So what you just have to do is you're looking for, and again, you could do this with a launch instead. And once it's working, it'll kind of work like that. So now we're synced up, more or less, what we can do is we can actually scrub to any point in the video because now the video track is synced with the data. And if we press play, we can actually get an instantaneous reading. So here in the 3D, we can see he's going along uh, the field. And then in a minute, when he gets to the end, it looks like he's going to do a left-hand turn. So there's the start of the turn. We can see the heading changing, we can see the speed, we can see the altitude and everything else. So that is in a good place. So I would probably save the project as it is here, so we save that synchronization. Now again, we can then change all of the gauges. So we can go into the gauge toolbox and you can add loads and loads of different ones in here. You can just pull them across. So if you look at something like UAV numbers, we can just drag it across and we can pop it up here. Maybe get rid of that one instead. You can also customize the gauges as well so that they work in different ways. Uh, and if there's enough interest, what I might do is uh, come back and do a little bit more of um, of stuff with this because this it just it's so much fun so much fun once you're happy you've got the layout as you want it then what you can do is go into file create video do all the settings and then click on create video and you end up with your file with all of these little pieces overlaid so hopefully that's been interesting for you. That is how Dashware basically works. The hardest part is just to download the files, set up Dashware so that it knows about iNav, and then once you've got all that set up, then the next tricky thing is doing the synchronization. Hopefully that little tip will help. I would recommend starting with a very short flight, only three or four minutes, and then that limits the amount of stuff you've got to play with. Synchronize the telemetry data to either the launch or the landing. Once you've got that done, then the uh, the track will kind of work all the way back. 
Again, you can do things like change uh, gauges and upload custom gauges and do some fantastically cool stuff. So if you do want me to do another video about doing more funky stuff with gauges on Dashware, then do leave a comment down below. Last big thank you again to Les for all his hard work in figuring all this stuff out and his patience in explaining it all to me. Hopefully it'll help those of you who are out there who have things like action cameras or the DJI HD system on their model and would love to be able to have this stuff so they can show their mates things like the altitude, the current that's being pulled, the speed that you're doing, your location and all that jazz. You can now create some really cool funky FPV videos and have all that data on the screen for free. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.